Let's get into the papers now and see what uh, the headlines in Nigeria are saying this morning. And I have with me a lawyer and public, public affairs analyst, Jide Ologun. Good morning, Jide. Nice to see you, really. Good morning. You're welcome. Thank All right, let's you. begin with uh, Daily Trust. That's the first paper we'll be uh, handling this morning. Bandits have taken over parts of Katsina. Uh, Governor Masari is uh, reporting that. Uh, that's what the Daily Trust is, is uh, fronting this morning. Then the Guardian saying the government to end sabotage, uh, cabotage waivers ice ship production in 2024. Okay, uh, that's on the Guardian. From the Guardian, let's move now to the Daily Trust. And Daily Trust is saying, Daily Times rather, Daily Times is saying the Senate on collision course with uh, Buhari sets to override President's veto on constitutional amendment industrial development, income tax relief bills, reconsiders 11 bills, and withdraws 4 bills. Okay, from the Daily Times, let's go to The Nation now, The Nation newspaper. Air Force bombs bandits, and President meets uh, service chiefs, and senators join call for state police. Okay, that debate is still on at the National Assembly and amongst Nigerians. From The Nation newspaper, let's go to The Blueprint. Marafa is saying 22,000 widows and 44,000 orphans now in Zamfara. It's really troubling. And Senate okays 10 billion naira intervention for IDPs. And uh, Nigeria Air Force strikes bandit strongholds again. And I've, I have mandate to end banditry in Katsina. That's the IGP or the IG of police uh, saying that. From the blueprint, let's go to the vanguard now. Vanguard is talking about insecurity. Senate condemns killings, insists on state police. And uh, has some multiple riders there to explain further. Plans 10 billion naira intervention fund in 2019 budget for Zamfara IDPs. 33 killed in Katsina as uh, ACF as, uh, BOT meets. Sets agenda for the federal government. Reprisals, no solution to Kajiru killings. Uh, Rufai is saying that, that's the governor. Sultan pledges to uh, galvanize northern traditional rulers in, in support of police. Balare Musa, ABC Ngosu, Chekwas Okori say, say killings avoidable. Okay, that's uh, on the Vanguard newspaper. Let's move now from the Vanguard to New Telegraph. <coughs> the New Telegraph is saying Senate moves to override Buhari's veto on two bills. Says President's reason for rejection simplistic. And senators to reconsider pass 11 bills withdraw four bills okay it's quite interesting some of the headlines and troubling for others especially when it comes to the killings and the issues of banditry in parts of the country but let, let, let's start with the issue of uh, the senate uh, you know being in support of state police what what how much of a game changer is this where we have the senate talking about this you know it, this is coming because we have symptoms of failure in policing Nigeria, because if the federal government has taken the responsibility seriously, this may not come up. And of course, one of the promises of the ruling party towards 2015 election was to move in the direction of state policing that has not been achieved. And if you look at the state of insecurity in this country, it calls for concern. We just, you know, learned now that 22,000 widows and 44,000 orphans, orphans in, in Zamfara. That's troubling. I mean, that is That's worrisome. really troubling. And you benchmark that with the level of poverty in the land. And, of course, if your environment is not secured, you cannot attract businesses into that community. And besides, you cannot even nurture the businesses that go on in that community. But then... The National Assembly should move beyond condemning and commenting. The responsibility to amend the laws lies with the National Assembly. But when we talk about the issue of state police, it's still going to be the people that, uh, who may reside within the place and it's still about the, the system and what should really change? Because the point there is just granting state police, you know, changing the, or amending the constitution and then ensuring that the, the laws recognize state police. But what has to change? It's all about our value system. Mm -hmm. We are quick to say that um, we are politicizing issue. But really, we have politicized pol uh, policing in Nigeria. 
and even it's security. Some, exactly. So, and then if we remove all these and establish the culture of having practical security beyond regional sentiments and political sentiments, we solve these problems. And there is a constitutional responsibility on the government to protect lives and property, to provide for the people and to create an enabling environment. So for me, it's a sign of governance failure. And of course, uh, talking about whether we now be able to manage it at the state level, let's practice it. How we isolate the case of Benue State, when people were being killed incessantly in Benue State, if the governor had control over the police, it probably would not have been that terrible. And you recall, that my Amibu president, even when he was in Benue State, said that he instructed Inspector General of Police who disobeyed him. And I mean, it is the man who, who, who is on the spot that feels it. And of course, whether we deny it or not, we have seen a lot of influences coming into policing in Nigeria. And of okay. course, look at the recent elections, several postings that were done. So whether it is controlled by the federal government or at the state level, we can have effective security in Nigeria. All right. But we must be sincere. And, Sincerity, and now, all right, you know, from uh, traditional rulers, from community people, from the government, and all of that. It's all right. Jido Logun, thank you very much for coming on. The now joining me in the studio are two gentlemen, a lawyer and public affairs analyst, G.D. Ologun, and lecturer, Dr. Dan Ekere. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us this morning for newspaper review. But then we'll quickly look at the stories making the headlines before we look at what is going on in Sudan. So I'll start with uh, the Daily Trust. Uh, bandits have taken over parts of Katsina Masari. And then we move to the Guardian, government to end uh, cabotage waivers, uh, says ice ship production in 2024. Senate on collusion cause uh, with uh, Buhari sets to override, override president's veto on constitution amendment, industrial development, income tax relief bills, reconsidered 11 bills, withdraws four bills. On the front page of the Nation newspaper this morning, Air Force bombs uh, bandits, President meets service chiefs, and senators uh, join call for state police. And blueprint, uh, Marafa, 22,000 widows, 44,000 orphans now in Zamfara. Senate okays 10 billion naira intervention for IDPs. NAF strikes bandits, strongholds again. I've mandated to end banditry in Katsina, IGP. Vanguard now, Senate condemns killings, insists on state police. Plans 10 billion naira intervention fund in 2019 budget for Zamfara IDPs, 33 killed in Katsina as ACF uh, BOT meets, uh, sets agenda for federal government. Let's move quickly to the new Telegraph. Senate moves to override Buhari's veto on two bills, says President's reason for rejection simplistic. Senators to reconsider pass 11 bills, withdraw four bills. Now, gentlemen, we wouldn't <coughs> be looking at the stories on the front pages of the newspaper at this moment, but then we'll be looking at something that is fresh and hot right now, which is reports from uh, of a military coup uh, in Sudan. Key ministers have been arrested and the state media is already playing uh, military uh, tunes and uh, an important announcement is said to be made. Uh, we know that uh, Sudan has 80% uh, poverty rates uh, over ta for the over 30 years that the president, Omar Abashir, has ruled the country. What do you make of this development following series of protests some, since December, but yesterday was said to be the 100th day. Let's start with you. Interestingly, Omar al Bashir came in through a bloodless coup in 1989, 30 years ago. And rather than engaging the resources of that oil-rich region to benefit the people, he has brought gross misfortune upon the people, you know, clamped down on women, though he was out to establish uh, an Islamic regime. But somewhere along the line, he also derailed on that. We've had a lot of clamp down on women. In fact, a lot of intellectuals, particularly the professionals, have been forced out of that country. And poverty has been put in place. You know, recently, uh, there was a protest on the increase in the price of yes. bread. By times three, 
you know, cashless ATMs, increase in a pump price of fuel, different kinds of hardship. But the lesson to learn here is that some African leaders find it difficult to bless the people with available resources and also difficult to step aside. Mm. You Speak know, and um, here we are now, uh, the same system that brought him into power is ousting him. You know, cannot hold to power forever, right. you know. Let's bring in Dr. Ekeri now. He said he talks about uh, uh, African leaders and how protests like this have to be what spores their deci decision to step aside. We saw what happened in Algeria and now this. Yeah, it's rather unfortunate that, uh, you know, we, we find people, although like, uh, you know, uh, Omar Abacha, a lot of African leaders who even come to office through the ballot find it difficult to obey the ballot itself because that ballot gives you a timeline that within social period you will hold out this office and after that you should give room for others to do what is right you know, but they have this mentality of kingship that has no tenure they just want to continue to enjoy the spoils of office without even delivering the number of cases without delivering on that particular mandate on the, the, the demands of the office when you don't you know provide those things that are required of your office, people will begin to agitate. Mm. But we find a case like Rwanda, Paul Kagame, after two tenures, you know, one way or the other was able to <laughs> find a way for the legislature to change the law for him to have a third term. But that is, in a sense, even though for me it does not really all go away, but in a sense the man is delivering. Mm. You know, and because of that, the people see have something to benefit from, something to, you know, to look onto. But in the case where people are saying that we are dying, and you say well, you must continue to lead, it becomes a big problem, Then really. you see things like this happen. But then how would this decision that, uh, or this path they have gone, pull them out of the so-called fi failed states that they found themselves? Yeah, with time, uh, quite frankly, you discover that we don't seem to have that democratic, uh, you know, attitude, even from the home, the background. We have this, this, you know, commanding attitude. We do engage evil children in discussions and all the rest in debate to agree on what to do. You, you simply give instruction, and that is the same attitude they have brought into government. But as we speak, if, if this military coup, I, we don't know what their plan is, whether they are going to organize a lecture within a short right. time or put up, uh, you know, a critical arrangement kind of that will eventually supervise an election. We All don't right. know, but I don't think quickly. it is the best thing to have a military junta in place. Mr. Logan, quickly. You know, invariably, the military have been protecting him for so long. Now they've turned against him, and this is similar to what happened in Zimbabwe. And I think the big lesson here is that in Africa, we need to understand the essence of governance, and governance is to bring fortune to the people right. and make lives prosperous for them and if you don't do that you will collapse under the weight of the failure of governance and that All is right. what we are seeing. We have to end it here at this time. Thank you gentlemen for your views so far on the well proposed military coup in Sudan. Let's get into the headlines now papers to see what uh, it's saying and the developments uh, we are following from Sudan as well. We have a lawyer and public affairs analyst with, uh, with us in the studio, Gideo Logun, as well as lecturer at the University of Lagos, Dan, Dr. Dan Ekere. Gentlemen, good morning. It's good to see you. Good Thank morning. you. Good Great. morning. Okay, uh, before we get into uh, Sudan, let's look at uh, some of the headlines from Nigeria to keep you updates with the uh, currency in the country or what's current in the country the nation is where we're starting from uh, right now air force bombs bandits and president meets service chiefs senators join call for state police okay that's what the nation is saying from there let's go to the daily trust bandits have taken over parts of katsina uh, governor aminobelo masari is uh, revealing that uh, that's a quotation from him there uh, from daily trust let's move now to the blueprint Marafa saying 22,000 widows, 44,000 orphans now in Zamfara. Really troubling, I must say. And Senate OK's 10 billion intervention for IDPs in that state. And the Nigeria Air Force strikes bandits, strongholds again. And I have mandate to end banditry in Katsina State. The Inspector General of Police is saying that.
All right. Uh, it's really troubling uh, development in, from parts of Nigeria, especially when you look at the security situation from Zamfara to Katsina, even Kaduna, and then even the Northeast that we've been talking about and all of that. But it's good that uh, agencies of government, arms of government are looking into this issue now. But what I'd like us to talk about are the recent developments from Sudan. Uh, this morning we heard of uh, a, a possible coup where ministers have been arrested. The president has been arrested from the reports we got out of uh, uh, Sudan. But the concern now, I'd like to start with you, Dr. Ekere, is that a military coup, from one coup to another coup, uh, how sure are Sudanese that after this, there won't be another al-Bashir again for the next 30 years? Well, thank you. Well, even if there will be, at least, uh, it will be a fresh one. <laughs> 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 it will be like it'll the be old a fresh yes. al-Bashir. Uh, yes, uh, you know, and, and at the beginning, they want to do some friendly things that will make the people smile a little. Okay before they start showing their true color. So within that period... Let there be some have, comic relief. Uh, yes, oh. there will be some, some level of... But uh, on a serious note, I, I think that uh, this does not go well for, for the continent. A scenario in which we don't have respect for values, we don't have respect for law, we don't have respect for the people that we claim to, you know, to be governing is, is quite challenging because on a normal day, that office suggests that you will be, you know, providing leadership. In fact, rendering service, you know, you'll be rendering service. A leader of a sort, you know, but more of a servant. And the, the, the focus is the people. Now, the people that you are ordinarily supposed to provide this service of leadership for are the people you are now oppressing. So what is the benefit of that office right. at the end of the day? So it, it creates a serious challenge. And this kind attitude of, of, you know, not wanting to, to surrender when it is time to, is, is quite really unfortunate It's for really the a continent. total contrast from, from Rwanda, on the other hand, if you see it. But, uh, uh, GD, let me, let me come to you on this. 41 million from uh, the last statistics in 2018. Population of Sudan, 41 million people. The government, or the president, rather, has ruled the country for 30 years. And the country still has about 80% poverty rate, rating the country as one of the poorest countries in the world. How would you put this together when it comes to the standard of living and the Abashiri who understand the people who say he loves his country and loves the people so much? I think there is an ideological crisis there, you know, starting with the leader because the reflection of what you have in a society is a reflection of leadership. I think he focused more on pursuing an agenda uh, that is more like establishing Islam on the people. And rather than engaging the resources of that country, uh, basically oil and gold, uh, to enhance the fortunes of the people, he derailed. Don't forget that he's been on the terrorist watch of the U.S. and that country has suffered from U.N. sanctions. You know, there was a time Osama bin Laden was there to set up a camp. And of course, when you begin to romance with darkness. All right, let me put you on hold. Let me put you on hold. We're just getting reports from uh, Sudan right now saying that the president has voluntarily stepped down and resigned from his office. This is the fresh report we're getting from Sudan right now, and uh, we're following that development right now. There has been 100 days of protest as of yesterday, and today makes it 101 days of continuous protest from uh, citizens in parts of the country, from the, from the capital to other parts of the country. And uh, they have been protesting, saying that they want the government, uh, and not just al-Bashir, the entire government to resign and give room for fresh election and fresh faces on in the presidency uh, that's the development right now well uh, let's let's get your reaction now dr Kerry. Yeah. The, the, the how related is this to the issue in algeria, algeria exactly, exactly. <laughs> you know <laughs> the algerians isn't they're learning and taking cues from each oh, other oh, now? yes but but it's quite good because the, the, what they are trying to portray is that power truly belongs to the people and what it suggests is that the people can demand accountability for as long as they have what it takes to, to bend any government to their own taste, you know, they can demand accountability. And the, the clear issue here is that they do not want any stain of Omar al Bashir around government. And so they want everything about him out of the office because at the time you replace him with one of his, you know, maybe team members. The tendency to replicate what because they, exactly part of his it, yes. kind of rulership. So they, they want a totally new system. They want a new set of persons, fresh ideas, you know, perhaps with better intentions, 
to come on board, people who can actually plan for the people, for them to enjoy some semblance of good governance. And I, all they're asking for is just for those basic things to be on, look at look at the level of hunger in the in the land as a result of you know and you the leader you are happy seeing this you know living well and the people you are leading are, are living a life of animals and you are so happy I, I I think it's really worrisome for the kind of leadership we are providing in Africa and it's not just about Algeria and uh, Sudan there are many other places that are yet to take this initiative. Even, even, even in places where there seem to be plenty, mm. people are still hungry. We, we have seen, we have seen uh, 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 Zimbabwe in about a year ago yes, when, it, when... it happened a while ago. It, it happened. Mm -hmm. Now, it has also happened in Cote d'Ivoire. When it comes to sub-Saharan Africa, we still have some sit-tight leaders here and there. In, in uh, Burundi, for instance... It's not just... Uh, they, they, see, they, those those they, are the ones that have manifested. The truth is that within them, yes. in practical all aspects, you have this attitude in almost all the leaders. It's just that in some places, they find it difficult to actually, you know, carry on with that attitude. Otherwise, okay. they have that tendency. Yes. Did it, did it, when it comes to the new kind of Africa that we are talking about, how much of... What impact are these having on... Maybe, maybe like a country like Cameroon, a country like uh, Congo, a country like uh, Uganda and the others? You know, it's been established that when government cares for the people, sitting tight may not be an issue. In fact, the people may not want you to leave. It may be difficult for Kagame uh, to leave office in Rwanda because things are looking up. You spoke about drone in Australia. You are enjoying that already in, in, in Rwanda. It is when you subject the people to poverty that you run into crisis. And there is something in poverty that constitutes a threat to sectional prosperity. And that's what you are saying. When the poor is led to the point where he has nothing or little to lose anymore, he will rise up. And that is the sovereignty we are talking about. So the best advice is to engage the resources of the land to enhance the fortunes of the people. I mean, if Mandela wanted to continue in office, he would have continued. So whether you want to continue or you want to respect the term allotted to you, mm -hmm. make sure you add value. I All mean, right. the, the let narrative it, let it be to the is benefit. a sad one. Exactly. Let oh. it be to the benefit ultimately. Thank exactly. you very much, uh, Jide Logun, for coming on the program. Dr. Danikere, thank you very much for coming thank as well.